is going on guys and welcome back to another video with your host as shit, always shit, 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 shit. Hey guys, hey Grouch here. Oh, where's K Mac? Well, he's out. He's out. He'll be back soon, probably. Maybe. Hopefully. Okay, so K Mac invited me on to make a video for you guys. So a big thanks to him for being such a cool guy and letting this happen. Well, for those of you who don't already know me, and I'm sure that's most of you, if not all of you, I like to do all sorts of countdowns, mainly anime and video game related. But honestly, it's all really whatever I'm in the mood for at the time. With that being said, I've always been a fan of cartoons growing up and still am to this day. But there is one particular cartoon that comes to mind that I've wanted to make a video on for a while now. So what exactly is it about Invader Zim that makes it so different from any other show ever? It's twisted sense of humor that still has me cracking up even today. Interesting yet mysterious characters with their own unique designs and some beautiful animations even in today's standards. Oh, and Gurr! How could you not love that guy? He was freaking hilarious. But I guess you get my point, so let's just fast forward to the countdown, shall we? And thus ends the longest intro ever. A Grouch presents 10 Facts About Invader Zim. Number 1. Invader Zim's creator, Jonan Vasquez, began his love for drawing cartoons pretty early on in his life. He first became interested in the medium after he began reading and obsessing over his older brother's stash of comics. No, not that stash. Ninja Turtles. His obsession with these books had come from their unique artworks and characters. This influenced him to spend a lot of time drawing his ideas into sketchbooks while he was growing up. His works were first recognized after he took part in a contest to design a new look for his high school mascot. This was the time he created the first early sketches of the fictional character that would later become Johnny C. Although he didn't end up winning first place, his school liked his work and began to publish his own comic strips in the school newspaper, titled Johnny the Little Homicidal Maniac. After graduating high school, he went on to study film for a short while before deciding to drop out and instead pursue a career as a professional cartoonist. It was during this time that he met Roman Dirge, who would become a future writer for the Invader Zim series, and Ricky Simmons, who would later be part of the show's coloring team as well as play the voice of Gurr. After having reached some success with his comics, he was eventually approached by Nickelodeon about producing an animated series. And thus, Invader Zim was born. The show's first episode aired on the 30th of March 2001 and lasted a total of two seasons before the show was abruptly cancelled. Jonan Vasquez has since then done work on a number of other shows such as Disney XD's Randy Cunningham and the online series Bravest Warriors, as well as working on a number of projects with both Marvel and DC Comics. Number 2. There are many references of Jonan's comic book works hidden within Invader Zim. Unless you were a fan of his previous work, however, it's very likely you wouldn't have noticed much out of the ordinary. For example, the shirt that Dib wears all throughout Invader Zim has the same smiley face that the character Squee wears from the comic with the same name. Zim's teacher, Miss Bitters, also happens to appear as Squee's teacher. Filler Bunny can be seen at the beginning of the episode Dark Harvest, and Johnny the Homicidal Maniac can be seen in the background alongside other monsters in the Invader Zim Halloween special. And given Jonan's sense of humor, it's more likely than not that there are more of these easter eggs hidden throughout the show, although he's never officially confirmed anything. Number 3. Something that Jonan Vasquez has confirmed, however, is that he makes an appearance within Invader Zim. Well, an animated version of himself at least. He can be seen in episode 6 along with the show's director Steve Russell in one scene, with a script on the table titled The Nightmare Begins, a reference to episode 1 of the series. Funny enough, they can also be seen in that episode during the scene where Zim first lands on Earth, and Vasquez can be seen once more in episode 9. Number 4. You would not believe the number of mistakes I found scattered within Invader Zim. Nothing major of course, but just those small things that only someone who's really observant could catch. For example, in episode 1 where Zim lands his cruiser, the Urken symbol on his ship only has one eye, but in another scene it has two. Zim being Urken should only have three fingers, but in some episodes he has four. Limbs forgetting to be drawn on characters, 
items being in places they shouldn't be, and the list goes on for a while. So many in fact that you might even question whether or not these mistakes were intentional. I mean how no one on the whole team would have caught these errors is just kind of hard to believe. Not to mention all the easter eggs we already know Jonan has added into the show, it wouldn't be that surprising if this was simply another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Number 5. In a response to a question posted on his Twitter, Jonan confirmed that Dib, his sister Gaz, his father Professor Membrane, as well as Johnny the homicidal maniac, are all actually Mexican. Vasquez has stated that his reasoning for making these characters quote, pasty Mexicans was because he wanted them to represent his brother and his family, whom he also referred to as pasty looking. He has stated however that this was never confirmed within Invader Zim because the story never asked for it and that the character's ethnicity was irrelevant to who they are within the show. Number 6. For some reason, this show seems to be obsessed with poop. The word poop can be seen written on various types of food throughout Invader Zim, most commonly seen on drinks or soda cans held by characters in the show. My first initial thought to this was, okay, maybe this is just a play on words to the word pop, like in soda pop, but no. No, it, it's not. Aside from just your drinking poop, you also got choco poop, poop corn, some breakfast poop, poop barbecue sauce, and poop candy, which even has its own rapping corporate mascot known as Poop Dog. Get it? Poop Dog? Poop Doggy Dog? No? No? Alright. Okay. Well, moving on, I guess. Alright. Number 7. There is a good chance that the Urken language in Invader Zim is the same or at least very similar to the English language. There has only been one scene in the entire series where Dib records Zim and Gur talking in a bizarre way that could potentially be the Urken language, although this was never confirmed to in fact be Urken. This theory is also supported by the fact that Dib was able to pick up and understand the transmission in which the Urkens discussed Operation Impending Doom 2 as well as when he was able to communicate with the tallest in a later episode. However, there is what I would call an official Urken written language. It can be found in the DVD versions of the show and it comes in the form of subtitles for all the episodes. What's interesting about these symbols, however, is that unlike the English language, there are only 20 characters going from the characters A to T. The letters U through Z don't seem to exist. For example, Zim's name is simply shown as M without the Z when shown in the Urken subtitles. We may never really know for sure, but I wouldn't think about it too hard. I mean, let's be honest, what part of this show really made much sense to begin with? Number 8. If you've been a fan of Invader Zim for a while now, it's very likely you've heard of the infamous Bloody Gur. It was a single frame photo rumored to be hidden within the show by the show's creators after Nickelodeon refused to add a scene involving Gur covered in blood into a kids show. I wonder why they didn't want that. Bloody Girl was also rumored to be the reason behind the show's cancellation. Well, as it turns out, this rumor actually turned out to be true. Well, half of it at least. While it is indeed confirmed to be fact that Bloody Girl is within the show, this wasn't the reason behind the show being cut from Nickelodeon. Invader Zim's director, Steve Russell, has even stated that the image wasn't noticed until after the show's cancellation. He began by first adding the single frame photo in one of the scenes in the episode of Bad Bad Rubber Piggy and continued to scatter the photo throughout the last 14 episodes. The image can be very difficult to see without slowing it down and it is unknown how many were added into the show. It is very possible, however, that there are still some that we don't know of even today. The real reason for Invader Zim being cut was simply money. At the time of its airing, Invader Zim was the most expensive show being produced, having some rather stunning 2D and 3D animations versus some of the other shows airing at the time. And while there were many fans of the show, it wasn't exactly a SpongeBob SquarePants. Jonan Vasquez has said that he would love to return to continue the animated show, but that a revival would be too expensive and near impossible. Number 9. With Invader Zim's early cancellation, there was a lot that never got to make it into the show. For example, there was supposed to be a final season leading up to a three-part movie finale to conclude the series. However, many scripts for the unfinished episodes can still be found online. Some of these scripts were even read by the show's original voice actors at the fan convention InvaderCon. But since we'll never be able to see these episodes for ourselves as they were originally intended, let's go over some of what would have happened. For starters, Tack was planned to be brought back into the show, 
as was the character Keith. Invader Scooge was supposed to have a bigger role within the show as a sort of sidekick to Zim. Many new characters were also planned to be introduced, including a new female tallest named the Almighty Tallest Miyuki. And it was supposed to be revealed that Dib was actually a clone creation of his father Professor Membrane, rather than his actual biological son. And speaking of Dib, Jonan Vasquez has said that the original plan was to have him killed off in the episode Bad Bad Rubber Piggy, and that he would be replaced by a character named Louie, who would have had an obsession with the paranormal. But of course Nickelodeon would not allow death into a kid's show, and thus Louie was never created. It was unclear whether or not this was actually a joke, but it is interesting to think about how the series could have taken a different turn had this have happened. Number 10. While Invader Zim is remembered as quite a dark and disturbing cartoon for some people, it is also, for many like myself, a precious gem that will forever be a part of their childhood. With its own unique atmosphere, the top-notch animations, quirky sense of humor, and unforgettable characters, Invader Zim will remain as some of the greatest memories for anyone and everyone who's ever known it. Well, almost everyone. There is one person that, in which for him, the story never really ended, Jonan Vasquez. And while he has said in the past that a continuation of the Invaders in animated series is almost near impossible, the series is finally back. On the 20th of February this year, Jonan announced that he had teamed up once more with Nickelodeon and Unipress, as well as some of the members of the original team who helped on the animated series, and were creating a continuation of Invader Zim in the form of comic books. He quotes this, I'm always confused when people say how much they miss Invader Zim, because the show never stopped running in my head, and then I remember everyone else isn't in my head. I try to imagine the world for all those people who don't know what Zim's been up to since the show went off air, and it makes me shudder. How can people live that way? Hopefully this comic will make the world a better place. The first issue of the comic series was released on July 8th and Vasquez has since released 5 more issues and confirmed 3 in the works and on their way. All I can say is, about damn time. And there you have it, 10 facts about Invader Zim. In case the intro confused you into thinking you were on the wrong channel, this video is supposed to go up over on KMAC time. Although whether it will be up soon or in about a week's time, I'm not sure. Reason being, I'm going to be out of the country for a week and my flight leaves in a few hours and I haven't started packing one bit. But yeah, assuming I can't get in the video on time, it'll probably be up once I'm back so either click the link on screen or in the description and subscribe to him for whenever that bad boy goes live. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could tap that like button if you enjoyed and subscribe for future videos. If you have an idea for your top 10, leave a comment down below. I make top 10s on just about anything. And with that being said, I'll thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.